Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with another Cinema 4D tutorial about the new lens distortion tool in Cinema 4D R17 that lets you account for a wide angle footage when you're doing tracking and compositing. It's a really helpful new feature that lets you unwrap wide angle shot footage and reconstruct it so your scenes match up and get that lens distortion effect. Let's jump into Cinema 4D R17 and take a look. So here we are in Cinema 4D R17 and I have a background loaded with this image that was clearly shot on a wide angle lens. We can see that because we see this bowing of what should be straight lines. And if we wanted to start dropping objects into our scene, we should start to see that same distortion, but we don't. And the same goes for footage. If we were tracking objects into footage, we would need to account for that. And there's a new way to deal with that. In R17, what we can do is go up to Tools, Lens Distortion. And what this will let us do is grab that same footage or image, depending on how we're doing our compositing. So I'll grab this photo and it's gonna load that in. And if I turn on my brightness, you can see that's our footage. And what I wanna do is use this to create a lens profile that I can use in my 3D scene to account for that distortion and apply it to my 3D objects. How I can do this is I'm gonna click add endpoint line. And what this is gonna do is create this three point line that I can drag around. And what I wanna use this for is to get a sample of what should be a straight line. So I'll grab this little sidewalk stripe because that's a pretty good representation and drag that out. Now I might need to zoom in on image scale to get a closer look. And then I can pan around by holding shift and controller command. And I can turn down my brightness if I can't see my line. And what I wanna do is create a line along this line as close as I can. And if I wanna add extra points to further refine it, I can do that by holding command and clicking and then just drag this and do this. And then I can just go back to image scale and offset and zero everything out. And I can see I have my line. Now this one should work pretty good, but if I needed to create an entire additional line, if I wanted to get more information, I could do that by holding command and dragging up and then I could get another line and say I wanted to use this little sidewalk to give it more information of what should be straight lines. And I'll just delete that one. Now, once I have this line drawn, I wanna to go to my lens distortion model and I can change that to a different lens. And if I knew what I was using, I could grab that or I can just cycle through these and see which one gets the closest. So I'll choose this standard classic and then I'm gonna click auto solve and you can see that's gonna flatten out my image and use these settings to account for that distortion. And you can see it did a pretty good job of unwrapping this. And if we go to image and go to image scale, we can see that distortion that it's undoing. And the reason we do this is because then we can save this lens profile. So I'll just click save lens profile and then just name this, I'll call this wide angle lens 01. And then I can use that later for either motion tracking or adding it in post effects when I'm adding on 3D geometry. So now that I've stored that back in my 3D scene with my background, I can start adding some objects. So let's just add a couple of cubes and I'll just pull those and say that these are tall little cubes that are sitting in the middle of this road for whatever reason. And I've already straightened out my ground plane or tracked my camera. So I'll just create a few of these. And then if I want these to be sitting on this ground, what I wanna do is I'll create a plane scale this all the way up. And since my background plane is even, it's gonna line up correctly. And then I'll grab the same background texture, drag it onto my plane, make sure my projection is frontal, right click and add a Cinema 4D tag for compositing and check composite background. And now if I do a quick area render, you can see that those are sitting on that ground. And if we started to add things like lights and shadows to those lights, we'd get that all composited together correctly. And those shadows don't line up, but that's not the point. But the issue is that we're not getting that lens distortion. Well, now that we've created that profile earlier, we can go to our render settings and go to effect lens distortion, which is new. And then we can load that lens profile and I'll just locate that. And it was this one, I'll go to open. And now you can see it reworks that render to account for that. And if we make this cube really tall, we'll really start to see what's happening and you can notice how it changes from the preview line of the object in our editor to what it actually renders out. And that's a pretty good representation. And if we were doing something like 
full motion tracking, which we'll go over in the next part of this, if the footage had that lens distortion, we could do the same thing on our motion tracker of add this lens profile. So being able to account for lens distortion in motion tracking and compositing is a really nice new addition to R17. And if you want to learn more about motion tracking R17 or just the idea of compositing in Cinema 4D with things like that composite background and some of those tags that I quickly went through, you can check out some of my other Cinema 4D tracking and compositing tutorials. I got all sorts of more in-depth videos on that topic as well as some new R17 features. And if you have any questions on this tutorial or any of mine, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella and you can hashtag those R17. And be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get at least weekly videos on Cinema 4D, After Effects, compositing, VFX, motion tracking, all sorts of stuff. And if you want to support the show, you can help me out to keep the show going by pitching in on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.